Yo, what's going on, guys? We are here with my playoff preview prediction for the Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers. If you guys want to just skip to the end to hear my prediction, just go to the last couple minutes. There's timestamps down below. But the way this works is we'll talk five minutes about the Magic, five minutes about the Cavs, how each team can win. Then at the end, I'll talk about who I think will be the winner and how many games. But I'll still talk about the other team and how they can win this. But I want to hear before we start, who do you think will win? Why do you think they will win and in how many games? Let's go right to it. Like, comment, subscribe. The Cleveland Cavaliers, ladies and gentlemen, led by Donovan Mitchell. This team has the sixth best defensive rating, 18th best offensive rating. Their net rating is 13th in the league. They are a middle of the pack three point shooting team. They are a top 10 assist team, 10th worst in score, you know, points scored. They're 20th. And their middle of the road rebounding. A lot of their offensive stats are middle of the road, but they're a team that Donovan Mitchell's on, and we all know what Donovan Mitchell can do. Uh, this guy can play, get to an MVP level. He can play that well, that good. Now the injuries that they have, you know, Karis LeVert, D Donovan Mitchell, Garland are all guys that miss games due to knee injuries and a back injury, and. Sam Merrill, Ty Jerome, and Dean Wade, we don't know their availability, but looking at what they'll probably run from what we understand right now, Garland, Mitchell, Struess, Mobley, Allen will be the starting lineup with Karis LeVert, Akuro, George Niang, probably being the three guys off the bench, and if they need Marcus Morris, Sam Merrill, all right, Tristan Thompson, Damian Jones to come off the bench right there. Cleveland heading into the end of the season was a, a team that was 20th in point differential, which is points scored per 100 possessions minus points allowed per 100 possession. As they were actually negative 4.3. Their offense, though, was taught was the 16th best while their defense was 25th in the, the last eight games of the season. Again, I know injuries were something that was holding them back and this is a team that on the year you know injuries have played a big part i mean jared allen's been a defensive player of the year candidate donovan mitchell darius garland jared allen evan mobley karis levert max Struess are all guys you know scoring double digits 26 from mitchell garland's 18 16 and a half from allen 16 from mobley 14 from levert 12 from Struess. then you have just under 10 from both okuro and yang and eight from merrill who's just stroking it and then you have marcus morris and craig porter who have both been fantastic and for me i look at this team and you know what i think i think that they they're against the magic they have the advantage that they are more experienced and that they are an older team Okay, that they have guys, multiple guys with playoff experience. They have an NBA champion in Tristan Thompson on the bench. They have Struess, who's been to the finals before. They have Mitchell, who's got playoff experience. They have George Niang, who has playoff experience. So does Morris. So there's like a lot of playoff experience on this team. And the Orlando Magic are a team that they're they they aren't one of the best they actually like are the fifth worst rebounding team in the league but their opponents don't rebound well either so they do a good job of like negating that they're not a three-point shooting team the way that the Cavs are going to win this is by forcing the team to shoot threes by forcing the magic to shoot threes they're the sixth worst three-point shooting team in the league if cleveland wants to win I think the biggest thing, sorry, I didn't mean to leave that the stats up on there this whole time, but if Cleveland wants to win this thing, they're going to force Orlando to shoot threes. And if you look at Orlando, okay, looking ahead and just seeing what the Magic are going to do, we know Garland, Mitchell, Struess, Mobley, Allen, like, I'm sorry, Mobley is going to do a good job of, Mobley and Allen are going to make Bancaro's life miserable. And I'm a Magic fan. Bancaro, Wendell Carter, Mo Wagner, Jonathan Isaac, they're they're gonna Mobley and Allen is a legit defensive duo. And then you have Franz Wagner, who's gonna get a Kuro, Struess, Levert, and some George Niang thrown at him. And he'll he'll be huge. 
And then Jalen Suggs, Gary Harris, Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz. There's like no one, like Joe Ingles is probably their like most dead eye shooter on this team. And I don't even think that's enough to, to, to win it for them, in my opinion. Like, I don't think that's enough shooting for this team to come out and be able to, to scare me as a, to, to beat the Cavs. And I think Cavs, realistically, if they could just stop the magic from scoring inside, which I think Mobley and Allen can, and they have Tristan and Damian, if they need to break the glass, they can stop. Orlando's guys from getting inside tell them to beat us from outside and tell Franz Wagner Gary Harris and Joe Ingles to shoot from outside all game we'll just sit here and watch and that way Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland won't be picked apart and nor like look Darius Garland Donovan Mitchell are better than Jalen Suggs Gary Harris Markel Fultz Cole Anthony and even the bench option which like they don't have a huge bench option of guards it's really Levert and Struess are their large shooting guards and so is Sam Merrill and Craig Porter is like their only pure backup point guard like at the end of the day I'm sorry guess what guess what it should be a cake wash and yeah i i'm surprised that it's i think the Cavs could really this could go two ways the 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 magic might have arrived and just blow the Cavs out the water or the Cavs will show that the that they're you know the better team and And I don't know. Do you guys agree? Uh, I don't know, man. Let's just go over here and talk about these Orlando Magic. Guys, I'm an Orlando Magic fan. I used to live in Eustis, Prior Lake. Not Prior Lake. That's in Minnesota where I used to live. But Eustis, Mount Dora area. Went to Treadwell, Treadway Elementary. Then I also lived in Lake Mary. I'm a Magic fan. I went to my first game ever. Our biggest weakness is scoring the basketball, specifically from deep. If we're going to beat the Cavs, we're going to beat them inside. First off, Bancaro and Franz Wagner need to ascend to the level. We need to control the boards. We need to force the Cavs to beat us with Mobley and Allen. We need to take Mitchell out the game and tell Garland, Mobley, Allen, everyone else to beat us. If we can take out Mitchell, we can win this. Orlando, to close out the season, was a team that was the 18th in point differential, 17th in point scored per 100 possessions and their offense or their defense was points a lot per 100 possessions was 16th so middle of the road to end the year as they've closed the season going four and four now according to cleaning per cleaning the glass now on the season they were a field goal attempts field goals made you know bottom the bottom of the league but their field goal percentage 15th and that kind of goes their free throw they get to the line a lot their true shooting middle of the league offensively middle of the pack as they were 22nd offensive rating but their defense was the second best in the entire nba and that's what it's going to come down to this is going to be a team that look jalen size gary harris Franz wagner paul van carol wendell carter markel Fultz, cole anthony jonathan isaac joe ingles mo wagner we have a lot of options to throw out there and we throw different ones every night Paulo averaged almost 23 points. Franz averaged 20, 13 from Jalen Suggs, 11 from Cole Anthony, 11 from Wendell Carter. We got 11 from Mo Wagner, 8 from Markel Fultz, 7 from Gary Harris, 7 from Joe Jonathan Isaac, and then when Gogov and Anthony Black play, they got like 5 apiece, and so did Joe Ingles. And Joe Ingles is our best 3-point shooters, ladies and gentlemen. Consistent ones are Joe Ingles, Jalen Suggs, Anthony Black, Jonathan Isaac, and then Wendell Carter. And Gary Harris. And then it, it falls to the below league average by a few percentage points. And that's where you, you sit here and you look. What is the way that we're like mm, it gets it gets frustrating when you, you look at this team because I am a fan of the magic. And I think this is either gonna be the moment where the, the magic ascend and we look like the team that we're supposed to be. Okay. And we 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 take it to the next level and we play like we're the team that we are. We're going to control the boards, pull Mitchell out the game, and we're going to take that next step and be a team that people should be afraid of. But I don't know if we're ready for that. I don't know if that that's if we're ready for prime time. And that's the the biggest the biggest concern here is I don't know if the if the whole thing with Orlando Magic is our shooting. If we can shoot and control the boards and score if we can score the basketball efficiently and consistently we will win this and we'll take donovan mitchell out of the game and we will win this i'm not concerned about that but can we do that consistently 
four four games in a row or four wins okay that's where i get concerned we have the talent i just think we're a year away when you know getting a guy like a clay thompson a paul george you know an actual shot maker that can consistently go out and get his next to bank and franz wagner is that's the biggest thing for us is, that is what we're lacking and but i also think this could be our come out game and there we've been a different team at times and i i very much think this Cavs matchup is a bit works in our favor especially with the way that we play basketball so i'm not overtly concerned especially with jonathan isaac and how good defensively we are that i think you know defense wins championships rebounding physically imposes your will on your opponent so for me i get excited when i see that it gets my me you know i i think there there's things to look at here that are good and that can be things that we work with that are intangibles now let me hear your guys' thoughts i want to hear what you guys think is going to be the winner and let's get right to the end of this video and yeah so when looking at this i think this is going to be a six game series five to six games i think whoever pulls out ahead will then win this so like let's say if it's like three one or three two i think it'll the opposing team's just going to give up and like i said i think this is this is going to be very dependent on three-point shooting if the Cavs can control the boards and force the the magic to shoot outside and not penetrate and jared allen and evan mobley can contain them then yeah this is this is going to go to the Cavs easily without a doubt now if the magic respond by just hitting threes and gaining fire and taking donovan mitchell out of the game the the magic will win this that's without a doubt and that's where i think this is a six game series and the reason why i'm going to choose i'm an orlando magic fan but i'm going to choose the cavaliers here is because of playoff experience donovan mitchell is the he, out of the two teams, he's the only guy who can get to an MVP level and take his game to a level that we we don't know if Paulo can do that. But there's a potential that Paulo can do that, and that's why it's hard to not choose the 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 Magic because of what Paulo is capable, what levels Paulo is capable of getting. So for me, I I definitely I'm excited to see how this all plays out like i said i think it's a toss-up i think the magic can win this just as much as the Cavs, but the Cavs, because they have the experience not just in the starting lineup but with the veteran presence and they can actually shoot the three-point shot that's where i'm going to carry the i mean this is literally so funny like a lot of these matches were really good like the other matches we're seeing are offensive dominant teams with lack of defense so that's just gonna be a shootout here it's two defensive dominant teams with a lack of offense playing each other where who is going to stonewall the other one's offense enough so their defense or their offense could beat the other team's defense it's it's crazy to think about but it's good basketball i think this is going to be one of the better series to watch this is the one that you should be putting on your your tivo your dvr i don't even know if people have those but yeah that this is definitely one that i would not want to miss and i get excited at the the prospect of seeing you know the ability to have a guy like donovan mitchell and paul bancaro kind of do a dual shootout even though they play different positions it would just be really crazy to see so i want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section that's it for me like comment subscribe if you made it to the end let me know yeah calves in six unless the magic shut down donovan mitchell and control the board and can hit three-point shots